one year in making the world's fastest controller, a lab accident showed me something I wish was not true. A small input lag difference does not give you more wins. Input lag from your button to your computer. Ping from a computer to the game server. Two players shooting at each other at the same time. Lowest lag wins, right? For the experiment, we build two controllers from some really beautiful matte black PCBs. Big thanks to PCBWay for giving them to me for free. Same parts, same code, and the cool part, we can set them up with extra input lag and the third trigger device. So we make sure that two controllers fire at the same time. We have two players, same computers, same ping, shooting simultaneously by a single remote trigger. 22. That is my morning ping. It changes through the day, but both PS4s are close. Their ping is almost always the same. We start off with no extra input lag. The one with the random lower ping tends to win. It should be an even split, right? 50-50? And that is exactly what happens. The ping change was around 3 milliseconds. Imagine if I lived closer to the game server and that ping was even smaller, like 1 to 3 milliseconds. That would be like flipping a 3-sided dice for the lowest number. But hold on, player 1 starts to get ahead. Both PS4 looked identical, but they're a decade old. Turns out one of them had way more dust. Checking it with an infrared camera, they have the same temperature, but one had an extra hot spot by the fan. To prevent overheating, it's most likely slowing itself down, which gives player 2 some extra lag. It's like player 2's dice got its number 1 side replaced with a 4. To even the odds, I added a 4 to player 1's dice as well, in form of a 1 millisecond extra input lag. And just like that, the battle was back to 50-50. Just one millisecond of extra input lag turned the results to about 60-30. But when I recreated the experiment in the evening, despite player 2's slower PS4, it never got an advantage like in the morning. As my fellow Norwegians swapped their greater outdoors for indoor screens, browsing, streaming and gaming, internet traffic spiked. The extra internet traffic had increased the change in the ping values. The one millisecond advantage was no longer enough. Chaos was here. Those three ping values we used to see, now there were six, sometimes even more. Now the players were suddenly throwing dice with six-sided dice. And the one millisecond advantage didn't matter that much. It was too much randomness. To verify our findings, I'm replicating the experiment in a simulation on my computer. First, we get one match length of evening ping. The ping is constantly changing and seem to change in a sequence pattern. We pull out one single sequence and use it in our simulation. Player 1 and player 2 will get a ping value from opposite sides and we compare them for the lowest ping to win. We will run it for 10 times and set a win radio. For every 10 rounds, we increase player 2's input lag with 0.1 millisecond and run it until we get a stable win rate. And there it is, 6 milliseconds. That is the amount we need to get to a 90% win radio for our evening traffic. And for our low traffic, 0.9 millisecond. It matches our 1 millisecond finding from the lab accident. The conclusion. For my network, I need about 1 millisecond lower input lag to get ahead in the morning. In the evening, I need about 6 times lower input lag. It's not only the ping that is always changing. So are mouses, controllers, and even your computer. Your computer constantly pulls or checks the mouse or controller for new data. It's always going to have a different input lag. Comparing average input lags and declare winners based on small differences is not very useful. You need to add it to the whole picture and not compare it alone. We can add the changing input lag to our simulation and we quickly see there is no real world difference between a 1000 and an 8000 Hz pull rate, even during low traffic. It's just all going to be random. If you ever see a device claiming to have a lower input lag than half of its polling frequency, there is something fishy going on. Let me show you why. 
1000 Hz polling rate, computer checks the device every 1 millisecond. Let's pretend there is a device that has 0 millisecond to notice your button click, and it's clicked at a random time between each poll. Stacking our clicks vertically, it's easy to see how long it needs to wait for the poll. That is the input lag. The average of all those 10 clicks, just under 0.5 milliseconds. 20 clicks, and it's closer. 100 clicks, and we're there. 0.5 milliseconds, half of our total poll rate of 1 millisecond. In reality, all devices spend time noticing you click its button, so it will always be even higher. So if you see a device that has a lower input lag than half the poll rate, you know there must be something wrong. I made a simplified version of my simulation tool that you can download for free. It continuously checks your network against the game server region and shows you the lowest input lag you need to care about. Any input lag smaller than this will not help you get more wins. To achieve the world's fastest controller, I need to aim for a six times lower input lag compared to the current fastest. And having a faster polling rate than 1000 Hz is not even going to give me a real world advantage, even during low traffic on my network. But if you're on a connection really close to the server, it obviously changes things. I plan to release my world's fastest controller design open and free for everyone. Knowing what we know now, maybe it's not going to have a big enough advantage to change your game, but maybe knowing a YouTuber only supported by Patreons made it. That might change how you see the world. And if you like a world where YouTubers make better stuff than large companies, you should sign up for the Patreon. Thank you.